Brian Powell of Iron Far here with Steve Way before the 2015 100K World Championships. How are you, Steve? Very well, thank you. Um, I've uh, yeah been traveling for the sort of good 12 hours today. Which is, How is that? I, I was going to say, because the one thing about the difference between Doha and this was that it was nice and close and, and no long haul flight, but it turns out when you've got to drive halfway across England on rubbish motorways in the UK and then when we get here there was a, it was a good three hours I think on the train. Three hours of train and then even another 20 minutes on and the two shot off. Two stops on the yeah. train and yeah so it's been it's been a long old trek actually so glad to be here. Thankfully when we arrived um, just in time for food which is obviously well, the Well then you've had a not so bad day. So. Um, so you were in Doha last year. I was. You came in as one of the favorites. We got to learn your life story before the race. We did. And then you did not and have the best then day on the course. I screwed it right up. <laughs> How did you, what did you screw up, Steve? Well, um, my stomach got screwed up, actually, which, um, yeah, was, uh, uh, my Garmin informs me that I spent 18 minutes not moving during that race. Mm. And they were all basically but spent in portaloos. There were other there. movements happening. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was in very. There was a period in the middle of the race. I think it was about four, between about forty and sixty k, when I was literally my only goal was to get to the next set of portaloos without, yeah, embarrassing myself. Which does occasionally happen in hundred k. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it, it's. Uh, you know, for the first sort of 20 miles, I think it was, I was in that group with Max and Jonas and everything was ticking over nicely. We were at the pace that I had planned to run at. I was in a group where I knew these were where the winner was going to come from. Yeah. Well, I was not, I was reasonably confident yeah. that was the case. There could I mean, be the, people up front, but those the, are people the, who the, I was hoping would come back and they did. Yeah. Um, so I was exactly where I should have been. Um, and I think I was quite smug about that, even had a little chat with Max and Jonas about it, sort of almost giggling at the fact that these people had shot off and aren't we the clever sensible <laughs> ones. And it was probably about a couple of miles after that that I had to make my first stop, uh, unscheduled stop. Now, and were you feeling ill at all before the race? No, or was this... no this was totally out of the blue. Um, sort of, as I said, it got to about 20 miles, I think it was, maybe a little bit before. And yeah. Um, and even when I had to stop for the loo the first time, I thought nothing more than, yeah. oh well. But then my my stomach just never recovered, basically. And now, I, do you think that ended up being some sort of illness, or was it, because it was also very hot. It was. Sometimes you're running fast and it's hot. I never. The, got, there's no blood going to your stomach. In all honesty, I never got to the bottom of it. Yeah. So I do not know to this day. So whether it was um, the time of day, the, the heat, the humidity, um, the food... Because um, that hotel we were staying at was far too nice, and the food was far too good, and there was far too much selection. And even though I was trying to be disciplined, I'm sure I wasn't. I wasn't. It was quite, quite luxurious. It was, and then I think in the back of my mind, I knew that um, we were going to be flying out straight away the next day, so there would be no opportunity to take advantage of this restaurant. <laughs> no, but I, I was pretty good with the food, but you never quite know what's in. So I'm not that, I tend to avoid fatty, any kind of saturated fats before races and things. The, the trouble when you're in that kind of environment is you've got no idea, to a certain degree, exactly what's in everything you're eating. So. Yeah. I mean, even today, I, it was like, the, where the, the food's here, it's decent in the other ones, but nothing spectacular. And it was pretty normal, but you even you, wanted to go to the grocery store. Yeah, so uh, basically, I'm, that's one of the reasons why I've just been to the grocery store to to basically buy all my food for tomorrow and for race day morning so you won't see me at the pasta party tomorrow <laughs> evening you won't see me at breakfast on saturday morning either so better safe so, than sorry yeah yeah i mean so it's bland all the way for me because so it could be a lesson for not just for yourself but anybody who's traveling to race i would say yeah if you can if it, it's probably worth making the effort it's a bit boring but you know you put all this trouble into yeah. a race just a little bit of extra effort to go and get your own food and sort your own food out. Just and maybe not uh, the whole time. Just like no, those couple of key just, meals. Yeah. So basically, I'm mm -hmm. going to have my main meal pre-race tomorrow. Lunchtime mm -hmm. will be my main meal of the day tomorrow, and then tomorrow evening I will just have um, some sandwiches that I'll have made myself and know what, exactly what's in them. So my main bulk of my meal was, will actually be already done and dusted by tomorrow lunchtime. Yeah. Um, and will that be of your own making? Yeah, uh, um, and then yeah, just a very light breakfast, which won't 
be in here either. So hopefully I've learned. I, I'm not, I'm, to be honest, I'm not convinced that it was the food. But you don't know. But so I might as well know. take one variable Exactly. Out of so, I mean, part of me thinks it might also have been, I'd had a brilliant 2014, the best of my running career. Yeah. So that was the best. Last year was the best year of my running career. And the year was coming to an end. And my training had been had gone all right, but um, it, I was almost sort of forcing my body just that one more race sort of thing. And, it and, and maybe it was just my body's way of saying we're not really in the mood for this. <laughs> Has your body been in the mood for this since no, then? <laughs> no, unfortunately. And this is uh, something that I've come to learn that the worst the, the worse your race goes the longer it takes to recover from, I find. So my best performances are normally followed by my best recovery period. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of Doha, I was almost dead. Um, <laughs> so there's, there's a couple of pictures of me where I really don't look like I'm going to make it past 10 minutes past. Because, <laughs> I mean, the stomach, my stomach had just taken it all yeah. out of me and uh, just getting to the finish line was... I was it was quite surprising how um, happy I was at the finish. Mm -hmm. Obviously... Partly disappointed because, you know, there I was thinking I was fighting for a podium finish. Um, and I was just ecstatic that I got to the end and managed to just dip under seven hours on that occasion. Yeah, and you, I mean, you still, you helped still, your team. Yes, and uh, you yes, got, and we ended up with the bronze. So, yeah. um, yeah, Had you I mean, decided the portal is enough and you stopped, <laughs> yeah. you know, your team doesn't get a bronze. Exactly, exactly. So, so it, it, you know, that sense of achievement was great, but I had put myself in quite a lot of um, stress yeah, and it, I think combination of that and the course itself. I know quite a few people came out of that race not recovering very well. You got Jonas who ended up with an injury. Ellie's uh, not been right. Not been right. Since. And, and I mean, I mean, Max hasn't on my on my flight thing. home. My ankles were about twice the size of my normal ankles. Um, so that just that that uneven um, surface that we were having and very to run on as well. and very just i think led to yeah some nasty reactions and, and so you're you're looking forward to the forgiving pavement of the netherlands yes hopefully <laughs> but yeah i mean so my winter was non-existent no um december was a write-off mm -hmm. i didn't really get into any kind of training until early january and because i had all these high ambitions of trying to qualify for the marathon for the world champs yeah. in beijing i was then playing massive catch-up in order to try and get a sub 214 at London. Yeah. Um, and risks were taken, which did not pay off, basically. <laughs> so I ended up with a torn glute, left glute, um, which about February time. Um, and um, yeah, basically my 2015 in general has been as bad as my 2014 was good. <laughs> So if you had a bad race at World 100K last year, maybe you so have a mirror. Maybe well, you have a really good race. So I'm hoping this is the the <laughs> the, the change of fortune in my 25th. Uh, I mean, what I'm looking for the, it, for one thing on Saturday is to have a strong, enjoyable race. Whether or not um, that's good enough to get me um, a podium or a win or whatever, yeah. what I want to do is finish that race um, strong and not um, put myself into the same sort of state I did in Doha because yeah. I need I, just for just for my own sort of uh, enjoyment and pleasure I, I'd like to I'd like to actually come out of a race thinking yes I've actually you know had a good one so that, that's one of my main aims for Saturday I mean I've had a couple of good races um, in the last uh, month or so okay. in the build so I had to sort of um, struggle to to um, qualify for the team yeah because I'd done nothing since Doha and they needed some sort of proof of fitness so I, I did a Edinburgh marathon mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't that long after I'd come back from injury and I wasn't at full fitness I guessed my fitness levels and I guessed wrong um, and I ended up going through halfway in 70 minutes um, at Edinburgh and finishing with a 229 which was pretty pretty miserable yeah um because uh, i was actually probably only in 70 minute half shape so if you go through halfway in 70 minutes it um, doesn't bode well uh, so, so you think you're in pretty so, good fitness now so yeah that that was a that was just about good enough to um uh please uka to but get me quite. on the team but not quite 
So I then have subsequently had to prove fitness along the way as we got closer to this race. And I've had a couple of um, good races. I, I had a, uh, a race on um, the uh, island of Jersey, um, which basically goes around the whole coastline of Jersey, about 45 mile race, mm -hmm. um, which is um, very sort of trailly, um, not a fast course, but um, ended up um, smashing Dan Doherty's course record. I know Dan's an Irish 100k runner, he's done quite well in the Europeans and the world. Um, so, hundred Ks before. Anyway, so legit. yeah, so it it, it it was quite a pleasing performance there, and that was over a, a decent distance. So that was quite good in the build up, and I did a nice fifty k trail race, which was the final um, tick in the box that UKA were happy with because I beat my own course record from last year, which was quite handy. Um, so yeah, things have gone reasonably well now. So I've had the best phase of training that I've had all year. Um, but as I said, it hasn't been in particular. So maybe, you know, maybe you're fresher than you were last year. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm going to do a Jonas. <laughs> I, I rock up to your first proper race of the year and absolutely smash it. Like Holy moly. I mean, Just run it. 545. I, I know. You, you run that. I run you, that. You that well, year. it. it Changed slightly. Maybe like um, five to ten minutes. Yeah, Jonas sets, thinks it's somewhere between five and ten minutes. but um, And it was drier, but even so, that was a stunning run. I don't um, think people who have not run that course realize no. that. Because it's, yes, it's a uh, flat but, road but course, some of, some but of it's the, off road. I mean, it's but some road. of some of the trail is is technical, yeah. single track. Quite. With with roots. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some, of like some, there's some 10K sections like where, you know, it's proper... Technical yeah. trail and to, to do a 545 90k on that, so what um, like a 625 equivalent I, I, 100k off, yeah, off road, I, yeah. And I'd say that was probably worth you know, on a flat road sub 615 type run, I would say that yeah. was that was stunning. And he's done that off, you know, he's had as bad a year as I have. Um, he's done very little mileage, I know he's done a lot of work on the bike, mm -hmm. um, but um. Yeah, I'll, I'll have some of that, please. <laughs> well, there you have it. Um, yeah, hope, so, hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully Jonas isn't on quite the same form. I'm, it, I'm, just, I'm hoping that a performance that good needs a little bit of recovery time. Uh, although, yeah, we, we shall see. He's certainly going to be a force to be reckoned with. So on last year, the UK team, the men, were, were got the bronze. Yes. But your team only has three members this year. We do. We lost. We lost a couple along the way, unfortunately. So, I mean, um, does that, in a way, it's tough because if anybody has a bad day, yes, you, you then can't. We're out. Then, and then. so, does it make you more conservative and hoping that you guys can get a bronze, or does it sort of free you and say, um, "This is more about me having my best race, yeah, my I, fastest possible race." I I don't think it will change any of our individual race plans. Okay. It certainly won't change my individual race plan, although, as I mentioned already, mine possibly will be a tiny bit more conservative simply because I want that I want that strong finish. Yeah. Um, but I, I know that Marcus and, and um, Craig have both got, you know, their own plans and their own strategy in terms of pace. And, and I don't think that would be influenced by the team. What it will do, though, is um, it gives us all that little extra bit of motivation because we know that if we finish, we're in the scoring team. Yeah. It's as simple as that. You're not. <laughs> so there's actually there, there's, there's some pressure in there that you, you know you've got to make it. Around. Yeah. So, I mean. Um, and I think that's a, a I think the, the both of the other guys and I think myself I think can take I think we can take the positives more than the pressure side of that yeah. to be honest with you I mean if, if if let's be honest when it comes down to it it's an individual race and everybody's real purpose there is to do well for themselves no matter how you know we all love being part of a team but and it's an extra motivation but, but it's it, but an it, extra motivation it, exactly the the primary goal is the individual and i think i think you know when things are getting tough and um we all know that um we are definitely scoring for the team it might just give us that little extra bit of motivation so um yeah, I know the other two guys. We've all we've all had some decent training. Um, we had our UK 100K champs, which Marcus and, and um, Craig both ran in, and I know that they both think that they're in better shape than they were then. 
so they think they they're both you know are quite confident about running some decent time so there's no reason if we all three of us do have a gun that could run that we can't be there in the podium yeah. i know i know yeah it so it's still we, we need to beat the odds of all three of us having good runs but you know the option is still there yeah. and uh yeah we'll do our damn hardest to get back on that team podium i think well so. best of luck to you and your Thank team you, then have fun out there Excellent. may you have Cheers. an enjoyable race Thank you. <laughs> Cheers.